Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator um, tutorial. So we're going to be covering the village part 2, uh, custom villages, and we need to actually look at JSON file. Basically what a JSON file will look like, something like this. Um, in short, there's a whole bunch of components in this particular one that makes it up uh, to be what it is. We have some arrays, we have objects, we have keys and we have an, a variety of things between in this particular document um, strings and numbers there's also um, boolean which is your true or false statements that you can use and those are pretty much what consist of a json file so you have your key values your ending brackets and your for your closing and starting brackets as well as your closing and starting array brackets and that's pretty much it when it comes down to it. It's it's pretty simple format to actually learn if you're wanting to get into understanding how things work with that. Though it doesn't have many principles, but when it comes to modding games and stuff, a lot of games actually use it because it's easy for people to customize, uh, well, edit values and stuff like that. And it's also readable, so you can actually read it pretty easily compared to other types of storage data storage things like this so let's go ahead and just cover the basics this is basically just an example that i ran with every json file will have a opening and closing bracket so this is done with the curling curly part so these are basically your your bulk of your actual um json file everything between these two brackets is basically what you're going to be putting in your brackets themselves so your key values, your objects, your arrays, everything goes between these. In some cases, games might have multiple of these and you might have a comma, something like that between the two and you have values in this one and values in this one. Uh, Starbound uses a similar system like that, but it allows you to patch the game to test for other mods it's a little bit different in that game than what minecraft does so we'll only be focusing on the minecraft part but with that being said uh you can put values in here we'll start with something very simple and we're going to put two quotations now most things will have quotations in front of them if you look at the example for a processor we have our key value here so basically it's quotations followed by a string um, this can be lowercase, it's case sensitive. So um, far as I know, Minecraft doesn't have any capital values in this. It might break the system. So always use lowercase if possible. And I think it supports numbers and underscores, but it does not support characters. So nothing like percentages, dollar signs, pound signs, at signs, exclamations, etc. It It will just support basically English um, lowercase letters underscores and your actual numbers themselves. So with that being said, uh, we can set our key value. We'll just call it something like age. And then we do, can do a colon, which will tell it, okay, this is a key value or a setting on this part. And then we can put our value after that. So your values can be strings which are basically quotations, double quotes, and then some text inside of this. You can also put numbers, but this is in string format. Uh, you won't be able to add or anything like that with your numbers that way. So in some cases, when you see a number in this thing, for example, probability is 0 0.3. This is probably a range between one and uh, zero, so that would probably be that. I don't know what the E stands for. I'm not that good with math, so I'm sure this is something beyond what I can comprehend, but this is apparently a valid math operation as it's blue, and I have tested this, and it is a valid procedure or JSON file. So basically that would be your numbers. If you're going to put numbers in something like a string like this, it's just going to basically store it as a string itself, not the numbers themselves. So we're going to put a number here, and this would be just a simple number like 45. We can also do decimal point. We can go 0.3, and that would be valid as well. So uh, the other option is a Boolean, which is your true 
and it will kind of turn orange in Notepad++ when you're using this value. Your other value for Boolean is false. So basically false means that it will not be true where uh, the true means that it is true. So you can set these two values. Most likely you won't come across that too often, but it's always good to know what those mean. All right, so in this case, we'll have age. We'll just set this to 29 because that's how old I am. Uh, if you have another key below that, uh, say like this, and then we'll say, uh, we'll call it um, mail. So we're going to set the value for this to true because I am male. Uh, this is invalid because there are two things here and it continues on to the next line. So basically what this needs is a comma after it now. So the bottom one doesn't require a comma because it's the last value in the list, but the one above it does require a comma. Uh, same goes if we put another one above here. So if we go ahead and say name, and then we'll go ahead and do a quote uh, colon, and then we'll do a string, and then we can do my name. So Kieran, and basically we need a comma at the end in order to make this valid. Uh, we can go ahead and test this in a website that I have in the link, or the link in the description, and we can go ahead and test this. We can see that it's valid. If we remove that comma, it's going to tell us a few information. So line three, in this case, it will highlight what's wrong with it, and it will indicate um, basically what the problem is. So you can kind of see that removing that comma will break the system. If we put it back, we can see it's valid. All right, so that's the basic variable types. Um, we can go ahead and create something a little bit more advanced now. Let's create an object. So we'll call this one object. This will be our object name. And we'll do a colon and then followed by the uh, object brackets, which are your curly brackets again. So basically this will be your object. Anything inside this will be your values. So in this case, we would want to put something like these inside your object. And we can do something like this, which will allow us to group those things together. And we can basically multiply the objects into sub-objects. So say this is object one, and this is object two. So both of these would be maybe for different values. So maybe we have somebody in their 30, they're named Bob and something like that. And then you could basically go ahead and create multiple objects, which you can test for usually under those particular things in file manager. So you would target the sub object or the object, and then you would basically go ahead and um, test for the value inside of that. Uh, there's also arrays, which are very simple. Um, they're not too complicated, but uh, if we're looking at the part here, what you can see is the processors one has an array. This is a square bracket followed by a object. So basically what this will do is allow you to separate it. We can actually see this in action under rules. Uh, you can see that the closing bracket down here is highlighted and the starting bracket up here. So everything inside here is your objects. Uh, these are not named objects per se, but these are separate values with different values in them. So in this case, we have a starting one and a closing one are two different values. You can see that there's also a comma at the end of these two. So when it goes into the next one, it will not have a comma at the end, but it does have a comma to separate these two parts. So in this case, we can simplify that and we'll go ahead and just create um, another var variable. We'll call this one array. Uh, we need quotations. So array. And then we can go ahead and do this with our starting. And then we'll go down to the bottom. And then we'll do our closing. And then what we need is we need values inside of that. So our uh, starting uh, object and then we need 
our starting one. And then we would have these particular ones a little bit further in, so like that. And then if we wanted to make another array object, what we can do is we can go ahead and comma and paste that in. And then we have two different things, uh, two things in this array list uh, that are using these brackets right here, the starting and the, the ending one. And then we have basically our objects, which consist of our values for those particular things. So that's basically how the array works. Um, that's pretty much everything that you need to know in order to get started with JSON format. Uh, there's not too much else to explain. Uh, just remember that when you have brackets, you need a starting and an ending one all the time. It doesn't matter if that's the case, if it's uh, any type of bracket, it's going to need an, a starting and ending. If you have another bracket that continues like this, you're going to have a comma at the end or even a value for that matter. So if you have a value, um, maybe a value like this, we'll just call this uh, value one and we'll do colon and then we'll just set it to like 35. You would also need a comma because this is a continuation of this particular thing. And then you would basically put it inside there. I don't know if that's actually going to work because this is an array. Uh, probably not. You probably need it inside the array, but uh, for example, something like this. Um, we can do, that actually needs to be a comma there. And then we would put something like that. So this is a little bit wrong. We would have a comma here because this is not the ending one. And then you would start over and then it would end here. So this is, this doesn't require a comma, but the one above does. So hopefully that makes sense when it comes down to actually working with JSON files. Um, in most cases, when you need to test something or there's an error, the game will crash. Uh, when something's not formatted properly and it will most likely tell you what file it is in the Console, so if you open up mcrater go to console It'll tell you what file it is. You kind of have to read it over to kind of figure out which one and Then you'll be able to pass it through something like this particular um, site uh, Jason lint and You'll be able to test that so let's go ahead and see how accurate this was for my test and see if I made any mistakes. So in this case, uh, there are no mistakes. This is a valid uh, JSON file right here. So hopefully you learned something today. This will help you understand the basics of actually starting to work with things like processors and basically how uh, other particular things that we need to learn how to edit in the next video so if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and i will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out